Wow. Come on, y'all. Russell Wilson. Holy shit. Um, very exciting. Russ has been fantastic this week. First, the Broncos bench Russell Wilson. Former Broncos starting quarterback formally informed yesterday of his release. They say the best two days in a boat owner's life are the day he buys the boat and the day he sells it. Well, the same feels true for Broncos fans with Russell Wilson. Hi, I'm Brandon Perna, and you might remember me from previous Broncos tragedies such as the Broncos robbed the Seahawks. The Broncos got the best coach in Nathaniel Hackett. Drew Locke is the future of the Broncos. Vic Fangio is exactly what the Broncos need. Joe Flacco, the perfect quarterback to save the Broncos. Paxton Lynch is the next John Elway. The new, new, new worst game ever series in everything I have ever said about one Russell Wilson was wrong. Every bit of optimism I've had about this team since Peyton Manning retired has been wrong. I don't know who the fuck I am anymore. I know, I sound like shit, okay? I'm sorry. And I feel like shit. And part of me believes this is my body ridding itself of the unlimited era here in Denver. But I'm gonna fight through this. I'm gonna fight through it. I wanna be clear. I do not hate or even dislike Russell Wilson. I just hate what happened to my team while he was in Denver. While he gets to move on and be paid $39 million by the Broncos next season, I have to keep watching them forever. And while some of you may think that's a choice, Brandon, I say, fuck you, that's not what being a real fan is. Sure, I got my side pieces, my gumars and the Bills and Lions and whoever's playing the Chiefs, but I'm stuck with the Broncos forever. They own my soul for all eternity. Today, I will present my in memoriam of the Russell Wilson era, less affectionately known as the Russell Wilson error, and remind you that even though Russell Wilson and that trade nearly destroyed the Broncos, and even though it might be a top five worst trade of all time, it's not the worst. So like a great Viking funeral, let me send Russ off with a montage of my experience here in Denver with him. A ride. Now that's a good idea. Okay, let's go. Come on, we're gonna go for a joy ride. Yeah, Broncos country, let's go for a joy ride. Russell Wilson! Russell Wilson's gonna save us! But what if Russell Wilson kinda sucks? He's not gonna kinda suck. That's a very weird clock management thing. It's no good! He missed it! I don't know why they do that. That is bizarre. Yeah, because you paid $250 million for a quarterback who can throw exactly one touchdown a game. Now it is fair to ask whether or not Russell Wilson is indeed blind. A quarterback who has played in the NFL for 10 years cannot not see a player this wide open. He's in season eight of Game of Thrones, Hall of Fame career, and as soon as the budget quadruples and Russ has to go off book without his author, everything around him burns. Thinking that Pete Carroll was the problem and not him, and not him, and not him, and not him. And not him. I'm fucking broken like Russell Wilson. <laughs> Do something, you pathetic football team. Russ, throw it deep on third down. Oh my God, he's got a wide open. Okay, I don't even know who's scoring. Day one of eating a danger witch every day of the week. <laughs> Didn't give me diarrhea. Like it's starting to consume me. I put some creatine in there too. You know what? Okay. You ever done anything dangerous? Like throw a, a red zone pick for no reason late in the fourth quarter? It is dangerous. Like not seeing a wide open KJ Hamler? I've done something like that too. Yeah, that's not what he wanted to cook. Sadly, that fictional starfish is far more real than the Broncos offense this season. Poser. USA. Jeffrey Dahmer. USA. Dear please. Russell Dangerous Wilson. Gonna get his first MVP vote this year. Guaranteed. Broncos country! Let's. Try again. This time with Sean Payton. Come on, Russ. Roll. By time. Launch it. Moon ball. Moon ball. Ah! 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 Flag! 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 No! 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 Is it bad 
when your NFL team gives up more points than your NBA team? What do you know about pain? Everything, Al! I know everything about pain! Bruce Hall into Denver territory! I never thought I'd say this. Kind of miss Nathaniel Hackett. I do. Yeah, the man who was fired the day after Christmas by the Broncos last year. Hope is the worst thing you can have as a fan of a bad football team. Russ looking to throw. Back at the end zone. Is that, that is maybe yes. Yes. Oh, I believe. He's a man of God, and this is what men of God do. All day, men of God do this. I for Sean Payton of pressure. Looking. He's dancing in Come the on, pocket, roll and he chucks it. Oh, oh did he, he catch it? it? That's the fucking touchdown. Flashbacks, PTSD. No, 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 not again, not again, not again, not again. Going full on Hail Mary. And Doesn't get there. If they catch it, it would be short. Oh. And ball bat down, brought us loose fucking like game. Lose another game in another horrible way. Oh, the ride. The ride is finally over. Just put my jersey on for the first time. Broncos orange, let's ride. To rehash the shit we already know, the Broncos trade for Russell Wilson was bad. Denver gave up multiple first round picks, Andrew Locke, Noah Fant, and Shelby Harris. And with all that capital, what has Seattle done? They've won zero playoff games and also fired their head coach. They went nine and eight both seasons and lost in the wild card round. Yes, Seattle won the Russ trade, but this is a good example of how fucked you are in the NFL if you don't have a top tier QB. The Dallas Cowboys in the 90s turned into a dynasty via the Herschel Walker trade. More recently, the Texans won the Deshaun Watson trade and are rebuilding their team. The Seahawks raked in draft capital. They had so much new cap space, they could have filled the space needle with heroin, sent that thing to the moon, and got the moon high as fuck on a Musk spaceship. Yet, they have as many playoff wins as Denver in the same stretch. Now, the ultimate sin the Broncos made was the contract extension they gave Russell Wilson. General Manager George Payton executed that deal, adding five years to Russ's contract, totaling a new $250 million. And in hilarious fashion, Russ leaves Denver without throwing a single pass on his five-year extension. Now, Russ made $85 million, Wilston, Denver, leaving us with $85 million in dead cap money, and we'll earn 39 mil from the Broncos without playing. <laughs> That's more dead cap money than Matt Ryan and Aaron Rodgers combined, to which I say, we rich, bitch. 2024 is the year of dead money hoes for the Broncos. My team may not be able to get to the playoffs, but we can eat dead cap money like Joey Chestnuts, baby. Yeah, we've got cap issues this season. Yes, we lack draft capital because we also gave up a second rounder for Sean Payton. And no, I don't think the Broncos will be any good in 2024, but remember, my opinion's always wrong. This franchise is not just rebuilding, but we're in the process of removing and clearing the rubble where once a great franchise stood until Russ burned it down. But the reason I have hope actually relates to one of Russ's key personality traits. You know, we, we can all come together and, and love as Christians and, and find a way to be saved. Russ's entrance into Denver coincided with new ownership. And like Russ's devotion to God, I too am devoted to my Lord and Savior, Walmart. I pray to the illustrious gods of capitalism every night, knowing my rich owners will fix whatever they can with money. Unlike those poor, disgustingly poor and gross because they're so fucking poor teams, the Bengals, Jags, and Cardinals. There's a reason my owner, Greg Pinner, sanitizes his hand after shaking it with your putrid lowlife poor owners. Now, many Broncos fans do want to see general manager George Payton fired, and I understand why. I really do. But I still like him. Personally, I believe his control has been diluted with the entrance of Sean Payton. And call me crazy, but I think George is the kind of guy who learns from his mistakes, and if anyone in the NFL is not going to give out a horrible contract again, it's him. Now, people are quick to call the Russell Wilson trade the worst ever, but honestly, it's still not as bad as Deshaun Watson's. Even if you put the sexual misconduct and assault accusations aside. I thought it was important 
to say that we as an organization know that this transaction has been very difficult for many people, um, you know, particularly women in our community. Watson started his career in Cleveland, serving an 11 game suspension, after not playing football for an entire year and change or whatever, played like shit when he returned, was below average this last season before getting hurt. Cleveland gave up three first rounders, so more than the two the Broncos gave up, plus a fully guaranteed $230 million contract for an alleged sex offender, who then watched his team thrive with an old ass Joe Flacco. At least the Broncos are consistent and also sucked with Joe Flacco. Cleveland can't get out of their contract until 2027. If they released Watson right now, two years into the deal, just like Denver did with Russ, their dead cap would be 136.9 million this season and 73 million next year. All of that is worse, so credit the Broncos for being able to actually rip off the Band-Aid because if Cleveland tried to do that, they decapitate themselves. I do wanna do a little retrospective here, okay? A rustrospective, if you'll indulge me, and I wanna start by taking you back to the moment we traded for Russell Wilson in April of 2022. Three, two. Level up, 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 level up. Do you want this yummy? Yummy all in your tummy. This yummy in your tummy. God, look at me. At least two years younger than I am now. Unaware of the hell I would be walking through for the next pair of seasons. I think we're fucking riding. I think we are riding Broncos country because it feels good. It's like this picture of that guy before and after war, except watching Russell Wilson play football was slightly harder. Look at me. Look how I sound. Look what Russell Wilson did to me. Look at how pathetic I am. Look at me. Look at me. At the time, though, I was blinded by the notion that the quarterback carousel of the six years post Manning would finally come to a screeching halt, come off its axis, and run over everyone who had made fun of us for a half decade. That Russ would land a DIA, hop on Blucifer, and go scorched earth on the NFL like Daenerys Targaryen. Little did I know that was only the start. Year one with Russell Wilson was a complete and utter calamity. The only good part of it was that if you wanted to, you could blame it all on Nathaniel Hackett. And I certainly did. I was hoping to God that Hackett was the problem. The only problem. And that no quarterback, even a future Hall of Famer, now pending, could overcome a coach that couldn't understand basic clock management, but had a deep knowledge of ear intercourse. I have really enjoy making love to your ears. I made a full length video defending Russell Wilson in 2022 because I believed at the time that he was getting too much flack from people in the media and people on Twitter. And he was. It's fair to criticize a player's performance, but the efforts to tear that man down were weird and a little gross. He was also getting criticized for his play, and that part was totally fair because he was typically playing like, um, shit. But he was also getting attacked for just about everything he did, whether it was, let's ride, let Russ cook, unlimited, the high knees on the airplane, his 12 bathrooms, or the creepy subway ad. I get it, you have a short man's complex. You can barely reach over this fucking table, right? Yes, Chef, I'm so tough. Yes, Chef, I'm so tough. You are not tough. You are bullshit. Oh, jeez. Seriously, people were treating him like he was the worst Subway spokesman of all time. And that's just not true. Did everyone forget about this man who assaulted Bob Barker back in 1996? The price is wrong, bitch. And now, strangely, it's all flipped. Russell Wilson in 2024 has been made out as a victim and a martyr for a lot of people who think that the Broncos did him some kind of injustice, RG3. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of hearing Russell Wilson's name get drugged through the mud. I watched every snap from the past two seasons and Russell Wilson had a top five touchdown to interception ratio. You didn't watch all the Bronco snaps, you fucking liar. And if you did, and you walked away thinking Russ was really, really good, then I can, I can tell you why your career failed. 
Injury. It was injury. It was injury, RG3. Usually it's people who only looked at the box score for Russ and saw his touchdown to interception ratio without actually sitting down and watching the games. We're late with personnel, getting out of the huddle. We took a while. I mean, that's got to change. We had to burn timeouts in the first half, and I'm not used to doing. We got to be better. I was upset about the call. That's all. Simple. Because if you did submit yourself to the unholy torture of watching Russell Wilson play football the last two years, you know it was worse than watching your parents have sex for three and a half hours. It was some of the choppiest offense I've ever seen. And that's saying something. Mixed with excellent red zone efficiency and 9,000 checkdowns to Samaj P. Ryan when the game was on the line. Samaj P. Ryan, by the way, has one hair in his beard for every three yard pass he caught from what Russell Wilson last year. For the second week in a row, he was the man out there on the final drive. Now let me make something very clear. The Broncos did not railroad Russ. They mortgaged their future to bring him to Denver. They gave him the contract extension that Seattle was waffling on, and he didn't play up to that deal, whether it was with Hackett or Sean Payton calling the shots. He wasn't good enough. And if you need any proof of that, I dare you to find a serious Broncos fan who's upset that he's getting cut. They do not exist. Let me warn the fans of Russ's next team, okay? Wherever he lands, Pittsburgh, Atlanta, yes, even Las Vegas, your biggest allies on social media will be Broncos and Seahawks fans. We're the only ones who will truly know what you're going through. Do not make my mistake and alienate the only people who have lived with Russ as their QB1. I am sorry, Seahawks fans. We're the only humans who know the paradox that is Russell Wilson. His wins are never as impressive as they should be. His losses are never all his fault. His stats lie more than Deshaun Watson or Brett Favre under oath. He's an insanely kind and giving man who devotes to helping others who will make the community he arrives in a better place. And he hides a massive ego behind great work ethic, which builds a wall around himself and his ability to forge real relationships with his teammates. Now, Russ eventually won over the Broncos locker room, but only after he was crucified by the media and the fans to the point his teammates could finally relate to him. Bonding through shared ridicule is not a way you want to earn respect with your teammates. Russ tries to bond with his teammates through showing the guy what Bible study looks like on a, on a Saturday night. and That's not how you connect with 25-year-old dudes who are getting paid real money for the first time in their life. Saturday night, you better be getting them drunk and laid. That's how you build bonds. Now, if he has success with his next team, two, and only two things need to happen. A top eight run game, okay? And Russ earning his teammates respect by being humble and not the fake humble he presents to the media. The real shit behind the scenes that did allow him to build a true friendship with Cortland Sutton and eventually win over Broncos players. That paid off because three of the top 10 catches from the 2023 season from the NFL were all made by Cortland Sutton with Russell Wilson throwing him dimes. And Russell Wilson still has a live arm. He can throw with the best of them, at least to the parts of the field he can see. And while there was plenty of suffering the last two seasons, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my favorite part of Russell Wilson's game. You unlock this door with the pizza, pizza, pizza. The fifth straight win. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of red zone TDs. A dimension of bad fumbles. A dimension of unfair penalties. You're moving into a land of bullshit and promise. Yes, you've just crossed the over into right. the Russ zone. <laughs> Now, he may have a hard time getting into the red zone, but when he does, the motherfucker is electric. The Broncos win streak in October and into November made me love football again. And when they really had a chance to make the playoffs, Russ didn't deliver. In four must win games, Russ got one win, okay? In conclusion, I will ask this question. Will the Broncos draft their franchise QB? I'm not even talking about right now in 2024. I mean, fucking ever at any point. The Broncos did not draft John Elway. They traded with the Colts for him. They did draft Jay Cutler, but then traded him to the Bears. Peyton Manning was released by the Colts. So with all due respect to Indianapolis, Anthony Richardson is ours. Give him to us. 
because we can't do it unless our debt for cheating the quarterback system has finally been paid. I feel like this Russ deal, we paid our debt like the damn Lannisters. Again, again, I will have hope this season, even though I know that's the most dangerous of all the human football emotions. Good luck, Russell Wilson. Good luck wherever you go next. You son of a bitch! Thanks for watching That's Good Sports and bearing with me while I sound like complete ass. Dear God, if you made it through this episode, you deserve a Medal of Honor. <laughs> Subscribe here, though. Come on, do it.